Minister Masagos Sukifli. Thank you, Chairman. I thought I should address the three uh, clarifications that uh, Mr. Faisal Manak has asked at the uh, presentation of his cards. To address the issue of HALA certification raised by Mr. Faisal Manak, I would like to assure members of the public. Sorry. Let me start with the complaints on the deviant, te deviant teaching. In response to Mr. Faisal Manap's query, MUIS has received 32 complaints on potential deviant teaching, five reports on dubious religious teachings and practices since formation in 1968. MUIS takes a serious view of deviant teachings that can mislead the community. MUIS will assess these complaints and together with the Fatwa Committee, will take appropriate measures to deal with these complaints. This include the insurance of fatwa, counselling and public education. When necessary, the fatwa committee will issue a fatwa and share relevant information with the public to immediately stop the spread of different teachings within the community. This has been effective in educating the community and preventing the public from falling prey to the false teachings of Islam. Secondly, I also want to address the issue on halal certification. I would like to assure members and the public that when it comes to processes for certifying food, MUIS has ensured there are robust, robust processes. MUIS takes a holistic and proactive approach in monitoring compliance with the requirements under the MUIS halal certification framework. This applies to the recognition of foreign bodies certifying food as we need to ensure their credibility and processes. When allegations were raised last year, MUIS responded quickly to investigate into the matter in a very rigorous and thorough manner. Some critics may have said that the investigation process took too long, but the same critic also called on MUIS to interview even more stakeholders. Having reviewed the report, I can assure the members that the investigation process was robust and deliberate, with opportunity provided to all interested parties to put submissions to MUIS to be reviewed. Interviews were also conducted as deemed necessary to gather further evidence. MUIS has also written to the delisted FHCBs to furnish details on the reasonable, objective grounds that led to their dismissal. Investigation findings were also submitted to the Ministry of Culture, Community and Youth, MCCY. MUIS has been open and transparent in referring the matter to the CPIB and police for further investigations even as it found no evidence to support the allegations of improper conduct or abuse of power by its officer in handling the FCB, FHCB cases. We want a proper closure so that there's no other doubts raised after this. On the Jakim issue, uh, MP Faisal Manap raised the issue of this alleged mid cartel in Malaysia. We are based on media reports all from Malaysia though, non-halal meat was being imported to Malaysia certified halal. This is a separate issue from the investigation. And we've stated this in our media report, our media statement, which was issued together with uh, MUIS and SFA. So I, will, I hope our, our member don't just read a Malaysian version, please read our version too. It was also published in Mothership. This, based on the Malaysian media report, the meat cartel issued, issue in Malaysia, Malaysia is, is being investigated by authorities and then some actions have been taken with individuals involved. On the quote mentioned by the Jakim officer that such mislabeling is happening in Singapore, Muiz is unaware of the background of his statement. In fact, after his statement was made, Muiz immediately wrote to Jakim officially in December 2020 to clarify that statement made. But we have not heard from Jakim on this matter. On Irshad, MP Faisal Manap also raised the issues of governance of Madrasa Irshad. I thank him for the comments and agree that good governance of our institutions is key for them to continue to thrive. This is the kind of issue to be put up in the open if there are doubts, responded to, if there are issues that has to be dealt with the law, we will de deal with it to the end. As the MP has not sent the queries ahead of time, I'm not able to provide a full response at this time to the various queries. However, I invite him to file a PQ and the matter so that we can address this fully. 
From what I understand though, Madrasa Ishad and Ishad Trust Limited are at present not affiliated and the latter is an independent entity. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Right. Uh, we have about 10 minutes before we move on to the next cut. So we can take the clarifications arising out of the cuts discussed now before we move on uh, with the debate. Mr. Faisal Manap. Thank you, Chairman. I have two clarifications for Minister. First, uh, regarding the, my uh, first question on the divine teaching, it's like Minister to clarify that uh, if I can repeat my my PQ, I mean my my question in Malay. Bilakah aduan pertama yang diterima oleh Muiz mengenai individu yang telah dikatakan mengamalkan ajaran sesat is related to the the, the most recent uh, case. Okay, second. Uh, on the issue of uh, discussion on Tudong, sir, I would like to offer myself to the ministers to be part of this closed door discussion. I'm not privy to any of the discussion being done behind closed door. I believe that, uh, as what ministers mentioned, it was only, it's only involved PAP Malay MPs, and I feel that all elected Malay MPs should be part of this closed door uh, discussion. So maybe through this. Involve, my involvement as well as other elected Malay MPs' dis, uh, discussion behind the closed door, I may consider not to bring or not to surface up what is deemed as Mr. Yaakob, I'm oh, sorry, Minister Masagos, as insensitive and uh, this divisive issue. So I do want to respond from Minister on this, whether can all the Malay elected MPs be part of this discussion as well as other discussions which involve the the, the relevant uh, Malay agencies such as Mendaki, Muiz, as well as uh, maybe not MEC, but Mendaki and Muiz. Thank you, sir. Minister Masagos, Sukipti. There was a similar PQ file on the Divine teaching in the recent one. I hope uh, the, the member can refer to that because we did put the dates and what we were doing in this particular case. On the issue of uh, consulting and talking to, to, the, to Mr. Faisal Mana, I think he will recall that immediately after our last exchange, maybe about five years ago, we had a closed-door discussion why I had to raise it the way I did it and what the points were and why we should not put this up in the open. We had that closed discussion, although it was not something that I invited him to, but I used that opportunity to explain to him behind closed doors why this has to be done. So it was not that I've never done it with the, with the member, I have done it. But it continues to be set, put up in the open on every occasion that can be done. And like I said, these are issues that we have our approach, which is to do it behind closed doors with our leaders, who we hope can understand and know how to bring this up to the community. And I know the member continues to have a different approach but may I also ask uh, Dr. Maliki to, to clarify on the issue of how to approach this so that uh, this is not a closed-door issue about how to approach between uh, and on issues like this, uh, which are sensitive and complex. Minister Mr. Maliki, Chairman. are you wanting to take the rostrum? Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, for giving me this opportunity to clarify. Uh, this issue relates to Mr. Faisal Manap's earlier comment, uh, both um, during the, his speech on the budget debate as well as um, the current discussion we're having on allowing nurses and those uh, in uniform services to wear tudong. Uh, I echo first uh, Mr. Manzago's um, views uh, that we do empathize with the views of those who want to don the tudong as part of their uniform in nursing. I want to assure our community and our Muslim women nurses that we take this matter very, very uh, seriously. Uh, 
we have uh, continued to engage union leaders, um, religious teachers, respected members of the community, putting to them the concerns of the government, uh, the other community um, leaders, and as well as uh, not just the Muslim community. They agree that these are sensitive issues and best discussed behind closed doors. They also agree that the solution is not straightforward and we should not rush into uh, one without addressing these other concerns. And whether uh, Mr. Fazal Mana participates in these sessions or not, I think the most important thing is a large segment of the community has been consulted and we continue to consult them. Um, take uniforms as an example. Uniforms serve as a, to project the common identity, which in turn develop an aspirin de core and strengthen camaraderie. In the case of public healthcare services, the uniform underscores that our healthcare workers are neutral and provide impartial care regardless of race and religion. This is a reminder on both the healthcare workers as well as the persons receiving the care. This is in addition to the uniform meeting operational and safety requirements. Sir, our Muslim nurses and their colleagues continue to perform their duties with dignity, pride and professionalism. We can attest to this through our own personal experiences. I was just hospitalised two months back and I attest to them performing their duty with utmost respect from all of us. But even so, even more important, they perform it during national crises like SARS and more currently COVID-19. Par excellence. There are Muslim scholars, sir. There are Muslim scholars who have given guidance that Muslims must make appropriate adjustments while staying true to their faith when living in a plural and contemporary society. This is important for us in Singapore. We must avoid situations like in other countries where issues of religious expression take center stage and become a divisive matter and put certain groups under the spotlight. I want to give an example. It happened two years ago. The Grand Imam of Al-Azhar, His Excellency Dr. Ahmed al -Taib, spoke. he came to Singapore. He spoke about the Tudong when he, was, when he delivered the Mu'is lecture in Singapore in 2018. I was the moderator for his session. In response to a question on Tudong not being allowed in certain workplaces, the Grand Imam made it clear that while Islam commands women to wear Tudong, he advised Muslim women against leaving their jobs solely because they are not able to wear it. He advised not to make hijab an issue that determines your life to the extent that you have no choice but to leave your job. And he emphasised that there is a legal maxim in Islam that would permit Muslim women to take off their tudung due to work requirements. So on issues that affect our common space, we must always approach them very carefully. Mr. Fazamanab may not agree with our approach, but this is our approach. Our religious scholars and community leaders support our approach as they understand that these issues, especially those that involve racial and religious sensitivities are complex and any decision on them should not be taken lightly. We must also ensure that our approach in addressing such issues safeguards the harmony between all races and religions in Singapore. As articulated earlier, Mr. Fajal Manu has previously, in previous occasions, also raised this issue and, and he had articulated before that he's doing so because it's his job as a member of parliament and giving feedback to government. We must know that our role as members of parliament is more than just giving feedback and reflecting public sentiment in the open, even in parliament. Yes, there is nothing that we cannot bring up in parliament. But PAP Muslim MPs also recognise our role as leaders of our communities. As leaders, we must exercise discretion and know the implications of our actions. We are leaders and we have the responsibility to ensure our collective desired outcome as a society and country to maintain racial and religious harmony. 
This cannot be compromised. Thus, as leaders, we have to lead our community to understand sensitivities when they cannot initially, maybe, of such topics and issues which are best not discussed in the open. If we are not careful, any discussion in the open may lead to serious ramifications. We have seen it happen, and we must guard against it. That is why the PAP Muslim Members of Parliament have continuously been engaging the government and the various communities, not just the Malay community or the Muslim community, in order to find a way forward for the greater good of Singapore and Singaporeans. Mr. Chairman and colleagues, I must tell you, it is not easy. We have been called names, but we must do and we need to do what is right. We do our best to convince our community leaders, our religious leaders, our union leaders. They understand. We hope that they will also, in their own ways, discuss these matters with their members constructively, yet in private, away from the glare of the public. And I hope Mr. Faisal Manak can do likewise. If he wants to speak to community leaders, he can do so. But do so away from the glare of the public. And that's what we should remember. I know I've spoken to many of them. In fact, just a few weeks ago, I spoke to a group of union leaders, and we spoke about these issues in private. The community leaders understand these sensitivities when it comes to race and religion. I sincerely hope that Mr. Fajal Manap understands that too. This is something we cannot take for granted. This is something we must take seriously. This is something that will ensure Singapore's racial and religious harmony continues to be kept the way it is. Thank you. Mr. Zulkarnain Abdul Rahim. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I have two sets of clarifications to make. Um, one, uh, perhaps addressed to SMS Zaki Muhammad. I'm quite uh, excited by the announcement of uh, Class SIAP Scholar KSS. Uh, pilot by Mendaki. Perhaps uh, uh, SMS can share a bit more on what's the age range and what are the minute details uh, for this KSS uh, program. Um, and secondly, in terms of the Mendaki Mui's preschool grant, um, it's um, meant to uh, encourage co savings uh, announced last year. Whether there are any updates um, as to take up rate. Um, lastly, uh, this is for Minister Masagos. Uh, I filed a few uh, PQs on the halal certification, and I quite heartened by the response uh, answered by Minister on the 1st of February that uh, MUIS is engaging all uh, stakeholders and FHCBs, uh, the foreign halal certification bodies. Um, can, um, and then the details for the review will be announced later this year. Um, I just would like to ask whether there's any progress and whether considerations can be had to the implementation of the ASEAN Corporation Action Plan on Halal Food and establishment of the International Halal uh, Authority Body during the course of this review. Thank you very much. As uh, my colleague, Mr. Zaki, making a way to the, to the speaker, don't Please. mind, Chairman, I take the second question first. Please. Yes. Please. We would like to have a cooperating framework for the halal uh, system, because this was facilitate the movement of halal goods and so forth. But in Singapore, we also work within the uh, many other uh, laws and regulations to ensure not just the halalness of our food, but also hygiene, uh, pricing uh, issues that will be faced by our consumers, and so forth. And therefore, we we will work also first to address our interests for our community as well as for Singapore, and then look at how the others can then fall in together with us to make sure that we have a consistent, cogent uh, halal framework for ASEAN even. But as I mentioned, once I say I'm going to look at what I need for Singapore, I'm quite sure the other countries will do the same. And therefore, this journey to get to where we want to be will probably be some generalization, and the specific way to address this issue will take some time to come. SMS, Saki Mohamad. Uh, 
Thank you, Chairman. Um, I'll keep it short because bear in mind your time constraints. Um, to answer members' question, Class Health Scola is a new program that we are putting in place um, as, a, as, a, as, a, um, as a continuation for our KMM at CC program. So this will involve our kids from four to six, hopefully um, helps them to uh, adapt into primary school better. And um, really, um, a few things that we want to go for to nurture them with uh, liter uh, literacy and arithmetic skills in one setting, and to also um, improve their nurture for learning. So we're going to run two runs um, with, uh, from May to October 2021, and each run will, will be held over eight sessions, including the uh, post-program assessment as well. And we hope to have about 100 kids benefit from the pilot program. On the um, Mendaki Mu'is Preschool Grant, um, just to an update, just an update, as of December 2020, the MMPG has now 80 children from 53 families enrolled. So of these 80 children, 67 of them had their parents' savings in the CDA, and 64% of them have achieved attendance of at least 70% at their preschools. So we will continue to give them maximum support um, together working with ECDA and MSF, and we, because we want to encourage parents to send their kids for preschool education so that they're better prepared for primary school. Thank you. I'll take two more clarifications, but please keep them short. Dr. Wan Rizal, and then I'll circle back to Mr. Faisal Manap. But keep them short, please. Thank you, Chairman. I thank the Minister for articulating clearly the position of the government on the issue of Tudong in uniform services. Uh, indeed, these are sensitive issues that should be handled with much care. I'm also grateful to notice that these conversations are, uh, are ongoing and have been made at various segments of the community. Uh, earlier, ministers mentioned about the importance of Asatiza within the community, and I am in agreement with their dedication, their ability, and of course, their influence. Therefore, I would like to ask on the role of our Asatiza in this regard, how can they continue to work with the government on handling such sensitive issues so that the community is also convinced that the religious sector can provide them with the right and appropriate guidance. Thank you. Minister Masagos. I thank the member for the question. This indeed is one of the difficult areas that MUIS has for the longest time since its formation, uniting our community uniting Asatiza so that not only will they fulfill their duties and obligations as religious teachers, but also understand how that can be done and even when it ought to be done. Therefore, this continued engagement that we have with them, whether through their uh, bodies, uh, regulatory bodies like the ARB or through the uh, associations like Pergas, must be ongoing. If there are new developments, we will update them and think about how we can move forward. Now, I think the real question the, the member is asking is when will this happen? When will we have a decision? You know, if you have already agreed with someone you're going to marry, you can have a wedding date. A wedding can have a wedding date. But when you are dating, I don't think you have a wedding date or time to decide with your partner we better decide this by this time or else we go together or not together. And therefore, when we resolve matters like this, we cannot resolve it with a deadline. It, instead, it is one where we engage and prepare the ground, continue to engage and prepare the ground. Why? So that when the moment comes and we have to make a decision, it brings the least impact to those affected. And hopefully even, because we have done this groundwork, address the issues, and hopefully they accept it with the generosity and the goodwill that we have as fellow Singaporeans. But that will take time. But that is what you get when you invest time to build relationship, trust with each other. And I hope that we can get to this answer when we can do this uh, as soon as we find the solutions and the, the considerations being addressed. Mr. Faisal Manap, please keep your clarification tight. Thank you, sir. So I got two point one is for Mr. Masagos. I appreciate his sharing that uh, he, indeed we have a closed door uh, person to person talk 
on this issue last year. I do, I do recall that. So I would like to just to ask Mr. Badi can extend the trust that he have in me as discussing something behind closed door in a really formal closed door setting. Okay, just like to hear from uh, Minister. Secondly, uh, with uh, it pertains to what has been alluded by uh, Minister Maliki, he did mention that there are some countries where uh, uniforms are not being allowed to be drawn by nurses because it causes divisiveness. But in contrast, sir, I, I kind of recall there are quite a number of countries like Australia, New Zealand, and UK actually allows uh, to drawn to be drawn. So I'd like Dr. Maliki to at least share a, a country or two which he was referring to earlier. Thank you, sir. Minister Masago, so carefully. Actually, by speaking to the member personally, I am involving him and I'm treating him specially because I want this to be a heart-to-heart -heart talk with him and exchange our views and not open ourselves to speaking in a, in a setting which we may have to constrain or hold ourselves. And I will continue with the, with the member if he wants to. I mean, we know, we know where to meet. And we can talk and we will continue to talk. But I urge the member to, co to continue to look at this situation in a very special way because this is about racial how many religious, how many, and the peace that we have with each other. Don't disturb it with putting up a sensitive topic like this that may spur some part of our community to actions that we may regret later on. On the issue of why other countries can do it, there are many things that other countries do that we don't do. We are Singaporeans. We do what is good by Singapore. If we want to do something that they, they like, we must also then do what we don't like that they do. I don't think we want that either. We do what is good for us, our community, our nation. And I hope as Member of Parliament, we swore that for our constitution to uphold and preserve it. Let's do that. I think the Minister has replied to both your clarifications. I don't think there's a need for Dr. Malaki to take the rostrum. No. All right, we'll move on.